Chapter Ten of Little Woman. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. Chapter Ten: The PC and PO. As spring came on, a new set of amusements became the fashion. In the lengthening days, gave long afternoons before work and play of all sorts. The garden had to be put in order, and each sister had a quarter of the little plot to do what she liked with. Hannah used to say, I'd know where each of them gardenings uh, belonged to if I see em in chin, and uh, so she might, for the girls' tastes uh, differed as much as their characters. Meg's had uh, roses and a uh, heliotrope myrtle and a little orange tree in it. Joe's bed was never alike to see, for she was always trying experiments. This year it was to be a plantation of sunflowers, the seeds of which cheerful land and spring plant were to feed Aunt Cockle, Toff, and her family of chicks. Beth had old-fashioned fragrant uh, flowers in her garden, sweet peas, and a uh, mignonette, larkspur, pinks, pansies, and southernwood, and a chickweed for the birds, and catnip for the pussy. Amy had a burrow in hers, rather small and earwiggy, but very pretty to look at, with the honeysuckle and morning glories hanging at their colored horns, and bells in graceful wreaths uh, all over it, tall white lilies, delicate uh, ferns, and as many brilliant picturesque plants as would consent to blossom there. Gardening walks rose on the river, and flower hunts employed the fine days. For the rainy ones they had housestead versions, some old, some new, all more or less original. One of these was the P.C., uh, for as uh, secret uh, societies were the fashion, it was thought proper to have one, and as all the of the girls admired Dickens, they called themselves the Pickwick Cl Club. With a few interruptions, they had kept this up for a year, and met every Saturday evening in the big garret, on which occasions uh, the ceremonies were as follows. Three chairs were arranged in a row before a table on which a lamp also for white badges, with a big P.C. in the different colors of each, and the weekly newspaper called the Pickwick Portfolio, to which all contributed something, while Joe, who revealed an ending, was the editor. At seven o'clock, the four members ascended in the club room, tied their badges round their heads, and took their seats with great solemnity. Meg, as the eldest, was Samuel Pickwick, Joe, being of a literary turn, Augustus Snodgrass, Beth, because she was round and rosy, Tracy Tupman, and Amy, who was always trying to, to do what uh, she couldn't, was Nathaniel Winkle. Pickwick, the president, read the new paper, and to which it was filled with original tales, poetry, local news, funny advertisements, and in which the, the uh, good naturally reminded each other of their faults and shortcomings. On one occasion, Pick, Mr. Pickwick uh, put on a pair of spectacles without any glass, wrapped upon the table, hemmed and having stared a hard at Mr. Snod, who was tilting back in his chair, till he arranged himself properly, began to read the Pickwick Portfolio. May twentieth, eighteen three. Poet's Corner. Anniversary Ode. Again we meet to celebrate, with badge of solemn rite, our fifty-second anniversary in Pickwick Hall tonight. We all are here, in perfect health. None gone from our small band. Again we see each well-known face and press each a friendly hand. Our Pickwick. Always at his post, with reverence we greet, as spectacles on note, 
he reads uh, our well-filled weekly sheet although he suffers from a cold we joy to hear him speak for words of wisdom fall from him fall in spite of croak or squeak our old six-foot snodgrass uh, looms uh, on with uh, eloquent grace and beams upon the company with brown and jovial face poetic fire lights up his eyes uh, he struggles against uh, his uh, lot behold ambition on his brow and on his nose a blot next our peaceful tupman comes so rosy plump and sweet who chokes with laughter at the puns and trumbles off the seat prim little winkle too is here with every hair in place a model of propriety the lights to wash his face the year is gone we still unite to joke and laugh and read and uh, tread the path of literature that doth to glory lead long may our paper broke prosper well our club unbroken be and coming years their blessings pour on the useful gay p c a snodgrass the masked marriage a tale of Venice. gondola after gondola swept up to the marble steps uh, and left its lovely load to swell the brilliant throng that filled the stately halls of count uh, adelon knights and ladies elves and pages monks and flower girls all mingled gaily in the dance sweet voices and rich melody filled the air and so with mirth and music the masquerade went on has your highness seen the lady below tonight asked a gallant uh, trouble baiter of the fairy queen who floated uh, down the hall upon his arm yes is uh, she not lovely though so sad her dress is well chosen too for in a week she weds count antonio whom she passionately hates by my faith i envy him yonder he comes arrayed like a bridegroom except the black mask when that is off we shall see how he regards uh, the fair maid whose heart he cannot win though her stern father bestows her hand returned the troubadour tis whispered that she loves the english uh, artist who haunts her steps and is spurned by the old count said the lady as they joined the dance reveal oh, the reveal was at its height when a priest appeared and withdrawing the young pair to an alcove hung with purple velvet he motioned them to kneel distant silence fell on the gray throng a naughty sound but the dash of the fountains or the rustle of orange groves sleeping in the moonlight broke the hush as count de adelon spoke thus my lords and ladies pardon to words by which i have gathered uh, you here to witness the marriage of my daughter father we wait uh, for your services all eyes turned toward the brutal uh, party and a murmur of amazement went uh, through the throng for neither bride nor groom removed their masks curiously and wonder possessed all hearts for respect, respect restrained all tongues till the holy rite was over then the eager spectators gathered round the court demanding an explanation gladly would i give it if i could but i only know that it was with the whim of my turban de viola and i yielded it to it now my children let the play end unmask and receive my blessing but neither bent to the knee for the young bridegroom replied in a tone that startled all listeners as the mask fell this uh, close noble face of ferdinand de Vurix, the artist's lover and uh, leaning on the breast were now flashed the star of an english ear was the lovely viola 
radiant with joy and beauty my lord you scornfully bade him me claim your daughter when i could boast as high a name and vast a fortune as a count antonio i can do more for even your admirations uh, soul cannot refuse the earl of de Devour, and de Devour, when he bids uh, his ancient name and boundless wealth in return for the beloved uh, hand of this fair lady now with my wife the count stood like uh, one changed to stone and turning to the bewildered crowd ferdinand ended with a gay smile of triumph to you my gallant friends I only wish that ye or whooping may prosper as mine has done and that you may all win as fair a bride as i have by this masked marriage s pickwick why is the p c like the tower of babel it is full of untruly members the history of a squash once upon a time a farmer planted a little seed in his garden and after a while it sprouted and became a vine and bore many squashes one day in october when they were ripe he picked one and took it to market a grocer man bought it and put it in his shop that same morning a little girl in a brown hat and blue dress with a round face and snub nose went and bought it for her mother she lived at home cut it up and boiled it in a big pot mashed to some of it with salt and butter for dinner and to the rest she added a pint of milk two eggs four spoons of sugar nutmeg and some crackers put it in a deep dish and baked it till it was brown and nice and next day it was eaten by a family named march t tuffman mr pickwick sir i address to you upon the subject of sin and the sinner i mean is a man named winkle who makes trouble in his club by laughing and sometimes won't write his uh, piece in this fine paper i hope you will pardon his badness and uh, let him send a french fable because he can't write out of his head as he has so many things to do and no brains in future i will try to make the t take a time by the fetlock and prepare some work uh, which will be all Comme la foe that means all right i am in haste as it is nearly school time yours respectively and winkle the above is a manly and handsome acknowledgment of past messengers if our young friends studied their punctuation it would be well a sad accident on friday last we were startled by a violent shock in our basement followed by cries of distress and rushing in a body to the cellar we discovered our beloved president prostrate upon the floor having tripped and fallen while getting wood for domestic purposes a perfect scene of ruin met our eyes for in his fall mr pickwick had plunged his head and shoulders into a tub of water upset a cake of soft soap upon his manly form and torn his garments badly on being removed from this uh, perilous uh, situation it was discovered that he had suffered no injury but uh, several bruises and we are happy to add he is now doing well Ed. the public bereavement it is our painful duty to record and the sudden and mysterious disappearance of our cherished friend mrs snowball pat paw this lovely and beloved cat was the pet of a large circle of warm and admiring friends for her beauty attracted all eyes her graces and virtues and endured her to all hearts and law her loss is deeply felt by the whole community when last seen she was sitting at the gate watching the butcher's cart and it is feared that some villain tempted by her charms basely stole her Weeks have passed, but no of her has uh, been discovered, and we requilinish uh, all hope, tie a black ribbon to her basket, set aside her dish, and weep for her as one lost to us forever. A sympathizing friend uh, sends the following gem. A lament for a pet paw. We mourn the loss of our little pet, and sigh or her hapless 
gate, for nevermore by the fire shall sit, nor play by the old green gate. The little grave where her infant sits is neath in the chestnut tree, but o'er her grave we may not weep. No, we know that not where it may be. Her empty bed, her idle ball, will never see her more. A gentle tap, a loving purr, is heard at the parlor door. Another cat comes after the mice, a cat with a dirty face, but she does not hunt as her darling did, nor play with the, her airy grace. Her stealthy paws tread the very hall where Snowball used to play. But she only spits at the dog, hugs uh, our pet, so gallantly drove away. She is useful and mild, and does her best, but she is not fair to see, and we cannot give uh, her your fair place here. No, or worship her as we worship you. Yes. Advertisements Miss Othony Luggage the accomplished, strong-minded lecturer will deliver her famous lecture on Woman and Her Position at Pickwick Hall next Saturday evening after the usual performances. A weekly meeting will be held at Kitchen Place to teach young ladies how to cook. Hannah Brown will preside, and all are invited to attend. The Dustpan Society will meet on next and parade in the upper story of the clubhouse, all members uh, to appear in uniform and uh, shoulder their brooms at a nine precisely. Mrs. Beth Bouncer will open her new assortment of dolls and millinery next week. The latest Paris fashions have arrived, and orders are respectively solicited. A new play will appear at the Barnesville Theatre in the course of a few weeks, which will surpass anything ever seen on the American stage. The Greek slave, or Constantine the Avenger, is the name of this thrilling drama. Hints. If S.P. didn't take much soap on her hands, he wouldn't always be late at breakfast. A.S. is requested not to whistle in the straight. T.T., please don't forget Amy's napkin. And W must uh, not fret because uh, his dress has not nine tucks. Weekly report. Meg, good. Joe, bad. Beth, very good. Amy, middling. As the president to finish reading the paper, which I beg uh, leave to assure my readers, is a bona fide copy of one written by bona fide girls once upon a time, a round of applause followed, and then Mr. Snodgrass arose to make a proposition. Mr. President and gentlemen, began assuming a parliamentary attitude and tone, I wish to propose the admission of a new member, one who highly deserves the honor, would be deeply grateful for it, and would add it immensely to the spirit of the club. The literary value of the paper had been no and jolly and nice i propose mr theodore lawrence is an honorary member of the p c come now do have him joe's sudden change of tone made the girls laugh but all looked rather anxious and no one said a word as snodgrass so uh, took his seat we'll put it to a vote said the president all in favor of this motion please to manifest it by saying aye a loud response from Snodgrass followed to everybody's surprise by a timid one. Death. Contrary minded say no. Meg and Amy were contrary minded, and Mr. Winkle rose to say with great eloquence, We don't wish any boys, they only joke and bounce about. This is a ladies' club, and we wish to be private and proper. I'm afraid you'll laugh at our paper and make fun of us afterward, observed Pickwick, pulling the little curl on her forehead, as she always did when down. Up rose Snodgrass, very much in earnest. Sir, I give you my word as a gentleman. Lorry won't do anything of the sort. He likes to write, and he'll give uh, a tone to our contribution and to keep us from being sentimental. Don't you see? 
we can do so little for him and he does so much for us i think the least we can do is to offer him a place here to make him welcome if he comes this artful affusion to benefits conferred brought tubman to his feet looking as if he had quite uh, made up his mind yes we ought to do it even if we are afraid i may say i say he may come and his grandpa too if he likes the spirit had burst from beth uh, electrified the club and joe left her seat to shake hands approvingly now then vote again everybody mem remember it's uh, our lord and say ah cried snodgrass excitedly ay 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 replied three voices at once good bless you now the as uh, there's uh, nothing uh, like taking time at uh, the fed to walk as wrinkle curiously observes allow me to present a new the new member and to the dismay of the rest of the club joe threw open the door of the closet and displayed lorry sitting on a ragged bag flushed and twinkling with suppressed laughter you row you traitor joe how could you cried the three girls miss nodgrass so led her friend uh, triumphantly forth and producing uh, both a chair and a badge in this image in a jiffy the coolness of you two were amazing began mr pickwick trying to get up an awful frown and only succeeding in producing an inable little smile but the new member was equal to the occasion and rising with a great solution to the chair said in the most engaging manner mr president and ladies i beg pardon gentlemen allow me to introduce myself as sam willard the very humble servant of the club good good cried joe pounding with the handle of the old warming pan on which she leaned my faithful friend and noble patron continued Lori with a wave of the hand was so flat and girly presented me is uh, not to be blamed for the base uh, stratagem of to-night i planned it and she only gave an after lots of teasing um, don't uh, lay it all your on yourself you know i proposed uh, the cupboard broken snodgrass who was enjoying the joke amazingly never mind what she says i'm the wretch uh, that dear said the new member with a reliquous nod to mr pickwick but honor i never will do so again and henceforth devote myself to the interest um, of this immortal club here here cried joe cl clashing the lid of the warming pan like a symbol go on go on added wrinkle and tubman while the president bowed beginningly i merely wish to say that as a Light a token of my gratitude yeah, for the honor done me as uh, the means of promoting friendly relations between adjoining nations i've set up a post um, office in the hedge in the lower corner of the garden and uh, a fine spacious building with padlocks on the door and every conceivement for the males also the females if may be allowed the expression it's the old martin house but i've stopped up the door and made the roof open so it will hold all sorts uh, of things and save our vulnerable times letters manuscripts books and bundles uh, can be passed in there and as each nation has a key it may be uncommonly nice i fancy and allow me to present the club key and with many thanks or your favorite take my seat great applause as mr willard deposited a little key on the table and subsided the warming pan clashed and waved wildly and it was some time before our order could be restored a long discussion followed and every one came out to surprise me for every one did her best so it was unusually a lively meeting and not a joy them till a late hour when it broke up with three shrill cheers for the new member no one ever regretted the admittance of sam weller for a more devoted well-behaved and jovial old member no club could have certainly did add a spirit to the meetings 
and a tone to the paper for his orations consoled his hearers and the contributions were excellent being patriotic classical comical or dramatic but never sentimental joe regarded them as worthy of bacon milton or shakespeare and remodelled her own works with good effect she thought the p o was a capital little installation and flourished wonderfully for nearly as many queer things passed at it as uh, though the real post office tragedies and uh, caravats uh, poetry and pickles garden seeds long letters music and gingerbread rubbers inventions invitations uh, scoldings and puppies the old gentleman liked uh, the fun and amused himself by sending old bundles mysterious messages and funny telegrams and his gardener who was uh, smitten uh, with hannah's charms actually sent a love letter to joe's care laugh when the secret came out never dreaming how many love letters that little post office would hold in the years to come end of chapter ten read by elijah fisher